My brothers and sisters, the condition of the globe is such that if we were to look at where we are supposed to be and where we actually are, we would find that we need to correct ourselves, remind ourselves, realign and try our best to get to what is required of us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The houses that we live in have become very big. But guess what? Size of family has become small. Not only have the families become small, but we do not even maintain family relations with those who are related to us quite closely. When was the last time you visited your cousin? When did you visit your sibling who might be married? When have you visited your uncle? You will have an extended family who has a right over you and you need to visit. You need to from time to time, perhaps exchange gifts. Perhaps you need to get together to have a little bit of what we call a bite, which means a meal. Minimum is at least to message them to find out how are you doing? Subhanallah, is everything okay? I haven't seen you. I haven't heard from you. But look, the size of the house is huge. You have five whole bedrooms. There's no one there and you're not even bothered about your extended family. That's the reality. And Allah Almighty reminds us in the Quran so many places regarding the fulfillment of the rights of kinship. When Allah speaks about giving in charity, He says, give those who are related to you, their due. Their due means if they are in need, they have a right over you from two aspects. One is they are poor, so you should reach out to them. And two is they are related to you, so you should reach out to them. When giving charity, you must first look in the circle of your family, your relatives. Is there someone who is perhaps poor, someone who is struggling? Reach out to them before you make that circle larger and Allah Almighty will bless you. Similarly, we have the Quran speaking about being conscious of your family, your relatives, your siblings. Allah says, and be conscious of your relatives, your relations, fulfill the rights. That's why Allah says, Allah is indeed ever watchful over you. Allah is watching. You wrong someone, you're not going to get away with it. Allah is watching. He is taking a record. Medicine has progressed, but the health of people is failing. It's become worse. You'll hear of amazing breakthrough in this medication and that medication, but go and check the sickness and disease that is across the globe. And this is why the hadith says two major gifts of Allah that many people take for granted. What are they? Your health and your free time. Before you know it, free time is gone. You had some free time you wanted to achieve, but you didn't. And you know what? Allah took it away. Now you don't have the time anymore. Why didn't you do what had to be done when you had the time? That's why a Muslim never leaves for tomorrow what is meant to be done today. You're healthy. Do what you have to. Use it in the obedience of Allah. A day will come when that will go. We have reached the moon, but we don't know our own neighbors. How many of you know your neighbors? I've had people who've told me we live in a building for 30 years. I don't know my neighbors. We know what's happening on the moon, but we don't know what's happening next door. And yet the hadith says the rights of the neighbor are so much that Jibreel alayhi salam continued to remind me of the rights of the neighbor that I thought that perhaps he might come up and say he's going to be an A. When you die, your neighbor inherits this portion. Obviously that didn't happen, but it almost perhaps was thought that it might happen. And another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ speaks about the rights of your neighbor. And he says, whoever believes in Allah and the last day, you believe you're going to go back to Allah, such a person will never harm their neighbors. Not even with a foul smell of smoke going in their direction. Nothing. People have become extremely intelligent, but people lack wisdom. You might have had top results at school. You might have been a person who's cracked all A's for your examinations. You might be a sharp businessman. You might be very, very very intelligent that people know this person's intelligent. But you know what? You're not wise at all. No wisdom. Wisdom is achieved by experience, by learning, by watching, by respecting the elders, by having mercy on those who are young, by interacting with people, by remaining silent at times in order to watch what's going on before you actually correct or you say something. Every occasion has a statement that is suitable for that occasion.
everything that happens has a reaction or a contribution towards it in accordance with what is supposed to be the best for it. You've got to sit and pause and think even before you open your mouth. In today's world, we know so many people. But guess what? We are lacking true feeling and genuineness towards one another. We know more people than our fathers and forefathers knew simply because of technological advancement. Our fathers and forefathers may have known a thousand people. We know a million. We know a lot of people, but we lack that genuineness. People are not genuine anymore. They want to know you because why? You have money. They want to know you why? Because you have authority. They want to know you why? Hey, it's a good looking man. They want to know you why? Because you have some popularity perhaps. But are they genuine? You just want to know me for me. That's all. Am I important to you? I'm a Muslim. Wallahi, my brothers, my sisters, I challenge you across the globe. Go through your contacts and tell me how many people you have not contacted in over a year. What are they doing in your contact list? We know people, but where is that connection? We need to build on it, right? Ask them once in a while, how are you? Hope you're okay. Then you're adding value to the relationship. The number of friends we have has increased, but loyalty has dropped and decreased. We've lost it. This guy is a friend. Tomorrow is an enemy. Why? There was no loyalty. Somewhere something went wrong. Where is the loyalty gone? Isn't it a sign of the hour that people lose loyalty? Faithfulness, where is it? You have a ton of friends, but you can't count on one of them. Don't you feel that sometimes? I have a ton of friends, but when I'm in a situation, I'm trying to think, who can I count on? Perhaps there's only two or three if you are lucky. If not, every one of them will excuse themselves. Hey, I'm a little bit busy. The next guy, hey, you know what, tomorrow. The other guy, hey, you know, I really can't help at this moment in time. The other guy, hey, I'm in a bigger problem than you. And what happened? You're sitting on your own. Where's your friends gone? A friend in need is a friend indeed. When you are in need and someone stands up to fulfill that friendship that they have with you, that is a friend indeed. You see, today we look at the types of watches available in the market. Very expensive watches. But guess what? As sophisticated as the watches have become, and as expensive as these watches have become, and as much as we look at the clock, even on our phones and everywhere else, and we know exactly what the time is at any given time, we actually do not have time. How ironic. I know the time, but I don't have time. I've got the latest watch, but I don't have time. I look at the clock every so often, but I don't have time. Why? Because we are occupying ourselves with that which is not necessary and not important. I had a bit of free time, so I was sitting and scrolling through TikTok. Okay, guess what happened? As you were sitting and scrolling through TikTok, time was ticking and talking. That's why they called it that. Because why? As you flick, one goes tick, the other one goes talk. Tick tock, tick tock. Before you know it, the day is over. What were you doing? I was just scrolling. And you didn't have time for your mother, your father, your siblings, your children, your parents, your grandparents. You didn't have time for anyone. Why? I was just scrolling. Close that device. Prioritize correctly. Please go and do something meaningful that will earn you a great reward. They say a long time back, houses were made of stone and the hearts were made of gold. Today, the houses are made of gold and the hearts are made of stone. A true Muslim only enjoys when he shares. I have a place I'm going to call my family and my friends. We're going to sit and we're going to really enjoy the gift of Allah. Talk about Allah for a little while. We'll have a meal for a little while. We'll ask each other about each other for a little while. We'll make a little dua and we'll leave. You're sharing what you have. But today you have a luxurious home. You have the latest motor vehicle. You have wealth a hundred times more than your parents. But hospitality is below zero. You get upset when someone rings the bell. Tell them we're not at home. Man kana Whoever believes in Allah in the last day should honor his or her guest. Someone visited you, honor them. Houses were filled with the love of Allah. And today the houses are filled with the love of this worldly life. Where is the love of Allah? Salah has become cosmetic. I just fulfill it because I'm a good Muslim. I need to get it done. And when you want to do it and you're doing it, you're going to add to it your sunnah and your nafil and everything else because you want to do it. But if you're doing it simply because you need to do it, what you're going to do? It's called a sharpshooter. Went in two rakats of salah, walked out. Hey, I did my farad. Mashallah, what happened to everything else? Well, you know what? At least I did my farad. Come on. Yes, you did. But surely, isn't it correct for us to remind one another once in a while to say, let's go beyond that as well. Come on. Do it for the sake of Allah. May Allah Almighty have mercy on all of us. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness and ease. 